and see you at next conference, Marcelio. And now we have Asanka Abaisinghe about uh, quantum duality of API as a business and a technology. How to conciliate developers and citizen developers in our organization. So we'll have Asanka talking with us about that. Hello, San Hello Asanka. How are you? Hey, Mehdi. I'm doing good. How are you? Doing really good. And again, we love your talks. We invite you again, and we're really glad to have you. Uh, mm -hmm. And a nice board behind behind you, right? Maybe this is where you draft your slides, right? Exactly. <laughs> and yes, so yeah, the the slides are up and running. Uh, yeah, stage is yours. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mehdi. And then I would like to thank the program committee and the organizers uh, inviting me again to uh, uh, discuss a different topic. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. As uh, Mehdi mentioned, I'm the chief technology evangelist at WSO2. So WSO2, we are a technology company providing core technologies for digital transformation, focusing on API management, integration, and identity and access management. The products are uh, released under open source license that you can uh, have a downloadable as well as we provide all these uh, products as a SaaS offering as well. So before jumping to the topic, I would like to give a quick introduction about myself. So I'm coming from open source roots that I am a committer of Apache uh, uh, Software Foundation and um, uh, entire my uh, career is uh, basically focusing on distributed computing and middleware. Uh, so I started from the product engineering and product architecture side and moved to the CTO's office. During that time, I authored a reference architecture for uh, cloud native applications and a reference methodology that you can use to implement the architecture. Uh, as evangelist, uh, chief evangelist, now I am telling the WSO2 story. So during next uh, 20 minutes, uh, what I'm planning to do, uh, walk you through this uh, topic of quantum duality of APIs and API, API as a business and API as a technology. Uh, because um, uh, when the API, uh, the second wave of API started around 2011, 2012, we were mainly focusing on how we can make an economy around APIs. But with the time, now we are mainly focusing on technology. So the balance between business and the uh, technology is missing for some reason. So that's why I thought of bring this topic back again and then find the middle ground for us that uh, to have a proper alignment with business and how we can uh, make an impact or how we can add more value to the overall value stream of the organization using APIs. So these are the four areas that I'm going to touch base. First, uh, these federated business models associated with APIs, and then uh, this polygot and heterogeneous nature of the API, because that is one blocker uh, to connect with business. And how we can leverage cloud technologies, because uh, cloud is um, an accelerator for a successful API program and uh, how we can touch base on the modernized development because uh, things like microservices, service meshes, um, and uh, Kubernetes, those type of technology advancements happening in the background. So how uh, APIs can cope up with those changes as well as how um, APIs can um, uh, utilize those technologies as a way to uh, have successful API programs. So uh, the, uh, the supply chain is a core concept uh, because uh, we are building products or services uh, in every organization, regardless of the domain. It can be a, a transportation company or it can be a, a healthcare company or it can be a financial institute. So regardless of this uh, business domain, every organization is building supply chain. And recently, Jeff Lawson, the CEO of Twilio, uh, he mentioned about organizations are uh, uh, organizations who got a uh, uh, better supply chain making a uh, better impact than their competition. So the supply chain concept is really important. In a traditional product development or physical products, uh, we had this way of uh, sourcing and then manufacturing, uh, distributing, and then moving to the sales and 
then go into the consumption type of a model. So that is the industry supply chain. But products uh, have changed today. Uh, we consume a lot of uh, digital products. So with the digital products uh, coming into the picture, we have a digital supply chain. And if you can compare uh, these two supply chains, same uh, fundamental concepts are there, but in a different way. Uh, so instead of sourcing, we are moving into a more discovery phase that we discover these um, capabilities that the market require, uh, what's our target segment uh, of customers and what they are teething issues uh, like that we will have a discovery phase. To do that, we will be utilizing a lot of data, surveys uh, like that. And then once we have a clear idea about the product and the service that we have to provide, we get into the development and we do the development and not in uh, a year or two like time frames, we usually try to release something within a month or maximum three months sprint. So that's where the agility and agile principles will come into the picture. Then once you develop, you get into the deployment that you deploy these applications in a cloud environment or in your own data center. Once you deploy it, it is available for the consumers that they will come and register. They will discover based on different uh, marketing campaigns or they will discover based on search engines and come to your product or service and uh, get registered. Registration in most cases is free, uh, but when you, if you are utilizing the services inside that particular product or service, you have to pay for a subscription. And the customers will use these things since everything is digital. Now you can um, uh, monitor the customer journey. Uh, there are problems, bottlenecks that they are facing and uh, get the uh, uh, particular feedback real time and feed into the product. So the second supply chain or digital supply chain is a iterative process that you will go through the experience and come back and improve the product. So that is how uh, the supply chain works today. And the new product experience, I briefly explain uh, the products uh, have become digital. Most of the cases, what we do to consume a product, we go to App Store that uh, uh, if you are in iOS platforms, you will go to the Apple Store, Apple App Store. If you are in uh, Android uh, platforms, you will go to the um, the Android based uh, app stores and Windows, Windows based app stores. So that's how we deliver a product to our uh, consumers. Not only that, some of the physical products, as an example, uh, purchasing a car can be done completely online. So Tesla is a really good example. If you want to buy a Tesla, you log in, create an account, and then uh, pick the model that you want to purchase, configure the model based on your uh, needs. Uh, and then uh, swipe the credit card, pay a down payment, and uh, sort out the financials. Once the uh, car is produced, they will notify you, and a member from Tesla will bring it to your home. So it's a completely different product experience that you will get on a digital platform. It doesn't stop there. So once you purchase the vehicle, since it's uh, digitally engineered, you will get updates on frequent intervals. And if you want to add a feature like autopilot mode or self-driving, it's just a matter of click a button uh, in the application and get it downloaded to your vehicle, as well as you get frequent updates, as I explained uh, um, previously. So this is how uh, the product experience and how as consumers we are utilizing this product. So what is the engine behind this? Because this is a seamless product experience from the discovery stage to uh, purchase the product and in the consumer stage. So it's all coming from the architecture behind these product designs. And if you look at the architecture uh, the behind these uh, product designs, we can divide it into two, uh, centralized layered architectures and then decentralized um, architectures. Uh, I think uh, people are moving towards to decentralization, but then again, enterprise uh, applications and uh, the data and systems inside 
enterprises are not that simple. Those are really complicated. So some of the organizations have to stick with layered architecture and some organizations might be using a hybrid model that some components running in layered architecture and some components running in a decentralized microservice-based architecture as well. So one common thing, if you carefully look at these two diagrams, the connectivity done using APIs, and I have categorized these APIs into three buckets, utility APIs, domain APIs, edge APIs. I think there are different uh, categorizations in the industry, but I thought this is the best way, uh, depend on some of these concepts like domain-driven design, uh, microservice architecture, cloud native concepts uh, like that. So uh, these layers in the left-hand diagram connected through APIs. And if you look at the, uh, the components in the decentralized architecture, again, connected uh, through APIs. So the entire communication between different type of technical functionalities that represent a business capability connected through API. So APIs are the glue or the connector in between different type of uh, capabilities. And if you like to read more about these architecture styles, I have put this URL uh, at the uh, end of, I mean, down the uh, slide. You can just go there and I have uh, created a bunch of reference architectures, a layered architecture, a segmented architecture, and a decentralized cell-based architecture as well. So let's uh, uh, look at the evolution of the APIs because the APIs started a long time back as pure technical APIs. We were using these uh, technical APIs for long, and if you've uh, been in the industry for a while, you might have used this EDI, file sharing uh, type of APIs. And then we moved to more interesting era with OLE, OLE2, COBA, uh, RMI, a web dev type of APIs. Then the uh, service-oriented architecture came with that we were using different kind of APIs utilizing technologies like enterprise service buses, SOAP, PPL, uh, and business activity monitoring like that. Then in 2011 and 2012 timeframe, uh, the, uh, the business of APIs or uh, API economy concept came into the picture. And I would like to give credit to two people uh, for this. Uh, first person is Sam Ramji, who used to be the uh, uh, technology uh, lead at Apigee at that time. And then our own uh, API evangelist, Kin Lane, who's the chief evangelist at uh, Postman. Those two uh, gentlemen did a really good uh, evangelizing at that time and told the world about why APIs matter. And these are these shouldn't be just technical APIs. These should be business APIs. So that's where the managed APIs came. And then we started working on this API management after that. With that, we were mainly focusing on REST and then messaging uh, event-related APIs like AMQP, MQTT, and then with uh, microservices architecture coming, now we are looking at service measures, gRPC, GraphQL, and recently async APIs, adding more and more capabilities to API from the technical front. But if you look at it, what really these technologies are doing enable different experiences and enhancing the business capabilities that allows you to build new business models. That's how the technology and the business connects using APIs. So APIs are the product of 21st century because why I say like that, if you have a rich set of APIs and um, uh, exposed through your core business capabilities, you can build any product quickly and then even connect physical and digital as I explained with the uh, uh, the Tesla experience. So uh, with that, there are different type of uh, usage comes with API and I pick a couple of organizations who's uh, utilizing APIs and how they utilize these APIs. First category called the direct monetization and second category is indirect monetization and then uh, some of these organizations, especially in the, uh, the transportation and uh, vehicle industry, they combine physical and digital and a large set of organizations are using APIs as the backbone for digital transformation as well. 
So the product exists in an ecosystem because, as you know, businesses can't do uh, a business by uh, themselves. Like uh, they can't be a silo. You have to connect with your partner network. Uh, you have to uh, uh, connect with uh, the. Uh, uh, if you have to connect with the uh, uh, your uh, other uh, supportive structure, uh, and then do this business. So marketplace is a good. Uh, analogy for this uh, because your api strategy and api program should be um, look like a marketplace uh, because uh, it is an exchange right uh, you have conversations you have exchange bargaining and there are multiple producers and multiple consumers in the api marketplace so with that uh, it creates multiple business models like federated marketplaces partner marketplaces, cloud group marketplace, close group marketplaces, shared revenue marketplaces, and aggregator marketplaces as well. And if you want to uh, dig in deep into these uh, concepts, we have written an ar article in Newstack, as well as you can use this uh, particular webinar URL I have put in the bottom. And uh, these are helping, like this example from the financial sector that uh, all these uh, institutes need to connect together to provide a seamless experience and a telco experience, how a telco can expose set of APIs for their providers and another a telco vendor can come and do an aggregated marketplace using those APIs explains in this uh, particular slide. Then this is how the physical, con physical um, uh, supply chain concepts are connecting with API, like lifecycle management as product, API product management, ERPs and financial in physical supply chain, API insights and the monetizations come with analytics, supply chain management, you can co directly connect with API integration and enablement and logistics as DevOps and the management of the APIs. And cloud is helping uh, as an accelerator. So I have put kind of the equation as well as how APIs are impacting cloud technologies uh, to enable these API programs here as well. And federation is very important because some of the components like API gateways are becoming a commodity. So how you can utilize it and create a federated API program is what we should look for. So in summary, these are the things that we looked at, the federation and business models we looked at, and then polygot and heterogeneous nature of these APIs, which helping to enable business models, and then utilizing cloud as a technology and uh, the modernization of the development using CI, CD, uh, agility, and various technologies like Kubernetes. So the contribution to this concept, actually, I have written a detailed article under Forbes uh, Tech Council. I have put the URL. You can go and read that. And as a technology provider, we have a complete API management platform that you can go and look at from this URL um, that provides all these capabilities that I explained earlier, as well as we have the new a SaaS on top of APIs called Corio. It is not only API management, it includes integration as well, a complete, complete enterprise iPaaS that you can go and look at from this URL as well. So if you'd like to continue this discussion, uh, I'm happy to do that. This is my blog URL and uh, these are my other contacts. I'm very active on LinkedIn and Twitter so you can follow me and connect and continue this discussion. Uh, so that's all I have lined up today, and I assume uh, this was helpful. And I would like to take uh, if there are any questions uh, over to you, maybe to uh, check whether there are any questions. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Asanka. Uh, the question is that are you able to adopt any business model with the current API stack? Yes, I think uh, we should be able to address most of the modern business models uh, by using the current API stack. And the, the blocker we had from the technology side is gone now because we have like request response type of APIs, we have event-based APIs, we have stream-based APIs, as well as, a as a 
as a api management platform uh, these uh, platforms have improved a lot so i think technology side we don't have any limitations it's a matter of understanding the business and then do a proper domain driven design to identify the apis and then support the business as well as have an iterative approach don't have an api program that you expose the api after an year have like a small chunks like one month two months three months iterative approach and expose your apis get the feedback and um, improve the api so that way you can support the business and uh, even help the business to create new business models out of your apis as well yeah, what are the business use cases that can uh, legitimate to go real time? Uh, so the real time, I think uh, it is valid for most of the business cases uh, because uh, as a consumer, we are looking for that uh, real time experience, right? As an example, I ordered a new book rack a couple of days back uh, and it has not delivered yet. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, delivery company, they don't have a real-time way of giving me the status of my delivery, and I am really frustrated. But if I went with a better uh, service provider, they would have provide this real-time information for me, right? Uh, so it might be a technical blocker this organization is having. So uh, little things like that and critical things like healthcare, uh, because uh, you need real-time uh, information about this stuff, right? So I think people are hung uh, about this information and they want exactly what's happening uh, at that point and then get this information. So I can't categorize um, use cases. I would say every use case belongs to that. I'm not telling all the uh, functionalities in a uh, particular use case, but there are a certain set of functionalities you have to provide it as a real-time API, which result a real-time experience for the end user. Yeah, we have a question about API styles and business models. Do you see any uh, business model that fit with certain API styles or not? Maybe marketplace uh, or other like that? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, there are uh, that's a combination, right? Like if you are going for a um, kind of a, a public uh, API uh, with the shared revenue model, then the uh, uh, marketplace will play a role. And then if you are going for a very close um, uh, kind of an API economy model, then a private API store will make sense. And then sometimes uh, you might have to use a certain set of workflows that uh, are required to even subscribe for API. Uh, so depend on that business model you have to enable. And then again, like sometimes you might have a mixed business model, right? Depend on your uh, segment of uh, users. So then you have to have, a, have that capability enabled in your API platform. So when you are picking an API platform, this is something you have to keep it in mind, look at the business models and then uh, check the capabilities provided from the platform because that flexibility should be there. And having extensibility in the API platform will help you to even uh, uh, handle the future use cases coming from the business side without any issue. Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, you reach our time, I think, Asanka. Yeah. Thank you very much for participating again and uh, for a nice uh, design on the slides, really uh, um, easy to understand. Thank you very much and hopefully connect with you again and have a great conference for everyone. Uh, thank you very much.